everybody. Welcome to beautiful, cold Chicago. And uh, Webex today on mango butterflies. So let's dig in. I've got a few slides here that I'm going to use, and then I will go into the think or swim and go through an example uh, of, of a couple of butterflies, and then I will do a live trade. So let's jump in with this. All right, the mango, an anthemony broken wing butterfly. And uh, today is for educational purposes only. So basically the mango we're talking, and that's what we're going to be talking about today, an at the money broken wing butterfly, but the mango concept came up uh, by, uh, in the trade by Jay Bailey, who's um, uh, one of the two mentors that have worked with me from almost the beginning, uh, Jay Bailey and Mark Fenton, and both excellent, excellent uh, mentors. And Jay um, came up with this trade, and what makes it unique is you'll see Jay will be teaching uh, one of the classes uh, is the neat risk management. He came up with some neat risk management guidelines for it. He'll be going over that with you. So Jay came up with the mango. I'm not sure if I ever asked Jay why did he come up with the word mango. I'm sure there's a good he'll, – he'll share that with you when he comes up on Friday, Feb 24th. But as you can see here uh, from the class schedule, um, this is only a two-week class. And this is unique with us. We usually do a four-week class, and we meet tr twice a week. Say, Dan, why are you doing a two-week class this time? I thought about it, and here's the main reason, folks. Like in the how to manage a 10K portfolio, we went over five, six, seven different strategies in detail, a lot of live trades, very, a lot of information. And I thought, you know what, let's slow down a second. Let's take some of the more successful strategies that we've used live and shared in mentoring and, and just share one at a time with folk. Uh, because I think, you know, if, if most people can have one strategy that they can trade consistently and do pretty well, they're thrilled, aren't they? Aren't you? And so we're going to take two weeks, uh, as we see here, Wednesday, Feb 15th, which will be a week from today. And so a week from today uh, is, the, is the first class. Uh, I'll be teaching that. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Yeah, I'll be teaching that. Uh, and then Friday, Feb 19th, all the times are at 1 Central. And Jay will teach the last one, Feb 24, at 1 Central. All the classes, like all our classes, are recorded and archived. And what's nice about it is you know, there's a spot on there you can ask questions, uh, and that can be three, four months after class, and they'll all come to me. Um, uh, so between me and Jay, we'll answer your questions. And, uh, and all the classes that I'll be teaching, I'll put on live trade so you see some good practical examples of these strategies. The class will be $197, basically half of – be half of uh, what we normally do because it's half the time. Um, it'll be two weeks instead of four, and, but it'll be just focus on one thing, and this is probably one of the more successful strategies that our students have been using in shared and mentoring, and uh, so that's what we're going to go over. Um, oh, you know what? Did I mess up there, Francois? Yeah. Um, sorry about that. So, Friday, excuse me on that. So the first class is Feb 15 of Friday should be, thank you guys, that should be the 17th. So it'll be four weeks. Each class will be an hour to hour and a half, and it'll be $197. And you'll be able to sign up on the Sheridan uh, page. We'll send you some information, but you could go right to the front page. All right, and today is just kind of giving you a little taste of that. What's the strategy kind of laying the groundwork? If you have any questions on that, let me know uh, now if you'd like, or you can email me, Dan, at Sheridan Mentoring. Uh, so a mango butterfly, another name for a uh, mango butterfly is a broken wing iron butterfly, and we'll go over an example of that. Again, we're dealing today with a very specific trade where we place it at the money. There's a lot of different variations of butterflies 
but we're doing it at the money. Uh, vehicle rut, you can also use SPX. I think today I'll be looking at a uh, rut and SPX. Uh, we usually start the butterfly at the money. That's where the most time premium is and at the money options. Um, as in all our classes thing, uh, we will manage and adjust the trades we put on. So with the key with this class is we're giving you everything from what time to wake up in the morning, what bar of soap to use for your uh, washing, what shampoo to use, what, you know, everything. So we're going to show you, you know, how many days out we do these trades, what strike to sell, what strike to buy, what's the profit target and the max loss, how do we set the trade up, how do we adjust it if it goes against us, A to Z, right? Can you trade SPY instead of SPX? Yes, you could trade the same thing. Uh, I'm not sure, I've never heard that before. Singh said he can't trade SPX in an IRA account. I have never heard that before. What, what brokerage firm are you with saying that you can't trade SPX in an IRA account? But anyways, well, let's jump in and I'll take a few spots here to uh, answer questions, but let's move on. Uh, the width generally in the mango butterfly is we're looking maybe 40 to 50 days out would be 50 wide on the put side and 35 to 40 wide on the call side. Again, there's different variations, uh, but um, I'm giving you the basics of this. You're going to have less risk on the upside, uh, more risk on the downside. And so I will go over this clear, but here's just a little guidelines of what this mango or at the money broken wing butterfly looks like. Again, duration might be 30 to 50 days. Um, again, this is going to be an iron butterfly, so we're doing a call credit spread and a put credit spread, and I will give you an example in a second here. So here's here's an example of one, right? Generally, it would be a little wider in SPX than RUT because it's it's it's, it's much more expensive, but we'll give like during uh, the class exact guidelines on everything. But you know, like here's RUT, I'm doing so. This is an example I took on RUT. I call it a 49-day mango iron butterfly. And again, simply what an iron butterfly is a call credit spread and a put credit spread, right? And so here's an example with, uh, at the time, SPX is 13.73, closed. So I just use the closest at the money basis, you know, like so 13.70, generally try to go at the money. So you're going to sell, right? sell an at-the-money call and sell an at-the-money put. And so that's the foundation of this strategy. Sell an at-the-money call and an at-the-money put. At the time when I made these slides last week, I used the March 24 expiration, which is 49 days from expiration. So, so if the foundation of this strategy is selling an at-the-money call and put, what do we call that? What do we call that, where you're selling an at-the-money call and an at-the-money put? What do you call that? Strategy. What is it? Yeah, it's a short straddle. It's a short straddle. Why would somebody sell a short straddle, right? Well, when you sell the at-the-money call and put, those are the options that have the most time premium part uh, part of an option. Those are the, the so that means they have the most uh, uh, the most uh, decay is in those at the money options. Now, why don't we just so do you need a software to show these graphs? No, any broke most of your brokerage firms have graphs, don't they? Right? Thinkorswim has graphs. Options Express has graphs. Trade King has graphs. Option House or E Trade has graphs. But the only one, what brokerage firm is there that doesn't have graphs? Here, I don't know if there is one that doesn't have graphs, but uh, if you're at a brokerage firm that doesn't have graphs, anyways, you should probably go to one that does. Now, so the reason we don't just sell at the money straddles is because you would have to put up enough, you'd have to put up your wife, your children, and your relatives as collateral, they would charge you a fortune, right? But the main reason I'm doing this trade 
is because I want to sell the at the money call and put, right? That That's what we do. We're, we're income traders. We're selling the time premium part of an option to bring in decay, right? Here's where the underlying price is. And we make money all in this range here. It's a beautiful thing, right? Now, because we don't want to have to put up our wife and our kids as collateral. All right. So for the wings here, right, for the wings, and I'm going to go over some examples of different butterflies in a second, but this is just an example of a mango or a broken wing. On the upside, right, you can see I'm buying my call. 40 points up from the call I'm selling. So the width of the call credit spread is 40, right? I sell the 1370s calls. I'm buying the 1410s, right? So I have the 1370, 1410 at the money, 40 wide call spread. Does everybody understand what I just said? I'm selling the at the money calls. I'm buying uh, the out of the money calls at the 14 10 strike, that's a 40 wide call credit spread. So half of this strategy is a, it's a call credit spread, right? 40 wide. So I get the questions. Let me just finish my thought here and I'll go back and do a few questions. So the next part of it is, so that's the call side, 40 wide. So I'll explain everything, margins, volatility, everything in a second. Next, on the put side, I'm selling, so I'm selling the same the call and the put at the same strike, that's the straddle. I'm buying my call 40 points up, and I'm buying my out of the money put 50 points down from the short put. So I'm selling the 1370 calls, I'm buying the 1410 calls. I have a 40 wide call credit spread. On the downside, I'm selling the 1370 puts, buying the 1320 puts. I'm 50 wide. And that's why you'll see the graph. Here's the expiration graph. You're gonna notice the upside has less risk than the downside. Why does the upside have less risk than the downside? Because the width of my call credit spread is narrower than the width of my put credit spread. Now, this example at the time was going for about $34 credit. So <clears throat> let me just go through a few more things on it. So at the time, I shouldn't have a point, but SPX was 1373 at the time. I just went at the money as much as I could. The VIX was 11, so this is a very low volatility environment that we are doing this strategy, the short Vegas strategy. The deltas on the strategy, the position deltas on the strategy, and I'll explain this in a second. The margin or capital to do this one by two by, to do it one time, the margin or capital will be about $1,500, $1,575, and I'll explain that in a second. But on that $1,500 position, my position deltas on the whole trade would be minus one or close to zero. So that's the goal with these broken wing butterflies to get the position deltas, you know, within, I'd say within, a couple deltas per one contract. So within minus one or minus two or plus one or plus two, but it's generally gonna be minus one or two. Here's your gamma, here's your positive theta. That's why we call it an income trade, getting positive theta. It just means you're, you're bringing more in a daily decay on the options you're selling than the options you're buying, why? because you're selling more time premium in their shorts than you are in your longs. So you're gonna get more, you're gonna get some positive decay every day um, from the shorts. Uh, you're, it's a short Vega trade, short 54, and what this means is if, doesn't usually happen exactly like this, but if the option volatility called the implied volatility of each of these four options were to decrease one point, 
I would make $54. If, if the implied volatility or option volatility of each of these four options would increase by one point, I would lose $54. Why would I make money if the option volatility goes down? The reason is, again, I'm selling more time premium in my shorts than I'm buying in my long. So if the option volatility goes down, it's shrinking the amount of time premium in my options. And again, I sold the ones with the most time premium. So I will make more in my short options than I lose in my longs. Conversely, if the option volatility goes up a point in each of these four options, I will lose, this is a theoretical number, I will lose about $54. Why will I lose about $54? Because, again, I'm selling the ones with most time premium at the money. And if option volatility goes up, I'm going to lose more in my short options than I make in my longs. Now, let's get to the issue of margin. Why is my margin 1575? And that's margin or risk. And that's the capital I would have to put up for one contract. Simply, you take the um, simply you take the uh, you know 40 wide and 55. So your biggest margin is going to be uh, on the downside. So you have 50 wide on the put credit spread. So that's five thousand dollars of risk if SPX goes to zero, minus your credit of. 34.25 gives you a margin of 15.75. So I took the width of the the widest spread, which is the puts here, 55,000 minus my credit is 15.75. That's the risk on the downside. That's the margin what you have to put up for the trade. The upside risk is only. 575, about a third. Hey, Dan, how did you get risk of only 575 on the upside? Good question. No one asked it. I'm just talking to myself here. Um, the width of the upside is 40, $4,000 minus the credit of 3425 is 575. That's the risk on the upside. So that's a little bit of what this trade is, how I'm setting it up, what the risk is, a little bit how the Greeks are set up. Now I'll answer, and then I'm going to go into the think or swim in a second. As you see here, width is 40 on the upside, 50 on the downside. Um, I'm going to go in and talk a little bit more on this and do a live trade, show you a few examples. But I'll answer, I'll take a, sp I'll take a little break here and answer any questions you have. One question says, hey, Dan, do you make any allowance for volatility upon entry? Do I make any allowance for volatility upon entry? Um, I do if, if uh, depending on where the volatility levels are in the market and depending on what the price levels are in the market, I may lean this a little bit more short deltas against the short vega. Uh, generally, I'll do that in maybe a higher price environment like we are now in the VIX is 11. Uh, again, I am a little more concerned with volatility. And this, when we're doing a 30 to 50 day trade, uh, if I'm doing a seven day butterfly or an eight day butterfly, and we'll talk about short term mangoes in the class too, then I'm not really concerned with volatility uh, because of the short duration. Um, somebody asked, explain margin calculation. That was an earlier question. I explained that. Uh, Herbert, if, if there's anything you didn't understand with my explanation, let me know and I'll do it again. Uh, Bob says, is it called a mango because it's 40 wide on one side and 50 wide on the other? No, I don't think that it's called a mango because of that. This is simply an at the money broken wing butterfly. I'll have to get from Jay can explain when he comes on why he called it a mango, uh, but it, uh, I think it more has to do with the risk management style. All right, let me just run through these questions, and then we'll go into the. Is this a good trade for the low IV right now, um, Matt? Um, again, I think it's a good trade. 
when the volatilities are low, when the volatilities are high, when the price is high, when the price is low, when the Cubs are winning, the Cubs are losing, it's a good trade. And I think what makes it a good trade is that there's a is is the person in the control seat, how you're managing the trade, right? I think um, because so so that's what I would say. It's it's a good tr trade because again, you could you could have a butterfly and say, okay, all the conditions are great for a butterfly, and you could still lose money. So to me, the key is that you have a good plan and how you're going to trade it. Um, you know, this low, you know, it, I can tell you this, I can tell you this, in January, we've had a 45 point range in the SPX. Let me say that again in Spanish. In January, we've had a 45 point range in the SPX, which is a $2,200 vehicle. It's about a 2% move. So, you know, if you said, is this good in the low IV right now? It's been working like a charm. Will it continue to work in the future? Well, you know, again, the working mean, the working, you know, could it have some, you know, rough spots at times? It could, but again, we're, we're not, we're not crap shooting here. You know, we have a plan, what we're going to do and everything and when we'd adjust it. But yeah, it's been working great. Why is the time premium different for each strike? The days to expiration is the same. Why is the time premium different for each strike? Well, if some strikes are more, Time premiums vary. Is there more at the money, they're going to be bigger? Is there more out of the money, because there's less chance to get there, the time premium is going to be less? Uh, so is the most important Greek here Vega? Yes. In a 49-day in a trade, yes, Vega is the most important Greek. Price is right there with it. Price is always important, but uh, volatility becomes much more important on a longer duration trade. Uh, a few more questions, and then we'll go into Think or Swim. I have a general question regarding instruments. What about ES futures? They are traded 24-5. Aren't they much better in this respect? No, I don't say they're much better. I, I don't think because a product trades 24 hours, that makes it better. Um, uh, a, lot of these, a lot of these products aren't that liquid if they're trading overnight. Um, so, no, I don't think it's a much better product in this. No. Um, how does this mango butterfly complement or fit in with the strategies learned in the 10K class? Uh, very well. I mean, we've talked. It's it would be one of the key strategies we would uh, we would use. What sort of returns are you targeting? Uh, generally, on these trades, I'm targeting about 10% for the. So if, if I put a 49 mango 49 day mango, um, you know, I'm looking to make uh, eight to 10 percent in probably uh, two to three weeks. That's the goal. That's the target. Uh, could you please go over margin calculation again? Uh, yes, again, the margin on the trade or the risk of the trade is you take the wide, uh, the wide, we have a 40 wide call side, 50 wide put side. So 50 wide put side is your biggest risk. So that's $5,000. The difference between the short put and long put minus your credit would get you the margin uh, for the trade. That's the 15.75. Your risk on the upside, since your upside uh, call spread is 40, 4,000 minus your credit is 5.75. So your upside risk is 5.75. Your downside risk is 15.75. Your margin is 15.75. Again, that's your difference uh, between the long and the short. Put 5,000 less your margin excuse me, less your credit will get you 1575. Do you look at the long call put deltas? Let me see if I get that. Do you look at the long call? I'm not sure what that means. Maybe if you could reword it. Uh, we'll get to profit target. Again, I, I won't be getting to all the exit strategies today, but we're looking for probably about 10% uh, profit target. And I don't want to lose much more than 10 to 12. I mean, there's different variations, but that's kind of the general. I think, uh, do I do a weekly mango? Yes, we will cover a short-term mango in this class also. Uh, all right. Yeah, the profit target would be 10% on your capital that you're using. 
which is your margin. So 10% of 1575, 10% of 1575. All right. And then we'll just do one more question and then we'll go in and then I'll go through my material and then at the end, I'll answer any other questions. Okay, so this would be the last question by Andre. He says, Dan, but what if the market sells off during the EU session, then the trade will hit max loss and you will need 10 trades to cover this loss. This is why I asked regarding E-minis. Um, I have never seen it. Andre, I've been trading since 1982. I went down to the CBOE. I've never seen an instance where the market sells off during anything and I come in the next day and I only hit a max loss and I'll need 10 trades to cover. I've never seen that um, in terms of, um, I'm sure over the last 25 years, uh, I will hit a max loss once in a while on a, on a gap. But again, I think, you know, I don't see that, right, in terms of, uh, these things. I think if you live in San Francisco, you'll be you'll be hit with the earthquake, the massive earthquake before before I start getting you know destroyed on these trades overnight. Anyways, the way we make our money is the short options are going to decay quicker than the longs, right? That's it. These are decay. We're looking for time decay. We realize our profit because the short options that we sell will decay quicker than our longs. All right, I'm going to take a break here from questions, and we are going to go into do a live trade, and I'm going to give you a little more information. So I'm going to go into think or swim here. Again, I'm not favoring one brokerage firm over the other. I have multiple accounts, but I'm just using this for today. There's many, many good brokerage firms uh, out there today. All right, so let's start with, just to get you a little more, I'm taking you under the hood a little bit to understand this butterfly a little bit. So we're going to start with, right now SPX is at 22.94 as we speak. Okay, so I'm going to start you with a 40 wide iron condor, right? I'm going to start you with a 40 wide iron condor. I'm going to take you, just give you an example to hopefully make the mango a little clearer. So we're dealing with a March 17 expiration, which is, what did we say, about 36 days out? SPX is 2294. Right, we're only about six points off the all-time high in the history of the United States of America. Did you guys know that? And VIX is at some of the lowest levels it's been since the Chicago Cubs won their first World Series 70 years ago or 80 years ago. All right, again, how do you make your money in in a, I feel like that song when you say, how do you make your money in a butterfly? How many remember that song from Boy Scouts or wherever? What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor early in the morning? Remember that song? All right. So you, the way you make your money, this is your graph at expiration, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We're selling these options at the money with the most time premium. We're buying our options out of the money. And because our short options are going to decay a lot quicker than these options, right, that's where you get profit, right? Now, Let's move on. So here's the example of a 40 wide butterfly, and I'm gonna take you from how do we evolve from a regular butterfly to a mango? And what are the differences? What are the pluses? What are the minuses? So we're selling the at the money call and put. Again, what's that called? It is called a short strangle. SPX, as we speak, 2294, we're selling the 2295 call and put. Yay! All right. What are we buying against it? I'm buying the 2335 calls, 40 points up. And I'm buying the 2255 puts. The 
put credit spread is 40 wide, the call credit spread is 40 wide. What is this called? An at the money balance butterfly. Dan, what do you mean? Sing says, should we put this trade on right now? Sing, I think you should sell your house, sell all your shoes in your closet, and do this trade right now. And I'm joking 100%. So no, Sing, I have no idea if you understand options. I have no idea if you've ever traded an option before. I have no idea if I knew what your knowledge was of options, I might convince your wife to tell her, to tell you never to trade options in your life. So I don't know anything about you. So, sh so should you put this trade on right now? If Sylvester Stallone would say, absolutely not, right? All right, but I will. Um, so it's 40 wide, this is called a balanced butterfly. But if you look at a balanced butterfly, this is a balanced butterfly. Dan, what's a balanced butterfly? The width of my call credit spread is the same as my puts. This is your expiration graph, but what do you notice about this T plus zero graph? Or if I put this trade on now, what do you notice that's weird about that graph? What do you notice that's weird about that graph? Not the expiration graph that's at March 17, but what do you notice what's weird about this graph? Anybody? This is the price of the underlying 2294. What's weird? Right? What's weird is I can lose money a lot quicker on the upside. I do pretty good on the downside. Why? Why? Because this is a symbol for deltas. I'm deltas. I'm starting out eight deltas short for every one balanced butterfly. Dan, is that a lot? I think it's a little bit. Yeah, it's because of the volatility skew. You know, your at the money 40 wide call credit spread is gonna be more short deltas than you're gonna pick up from the long deltas on the at the money 40 wide put spread because of the volatility. So the bottom line is when you start out day one, I'm short about eight deltas, right? My theta on this trade, right? The cost of this trade is around $29.55, right? I'm gonna round it to $30 just because I can do math easier with something at 30 than 29.55. So if we say the credit is around $30 here and the width of these spreads is 40, quiz, quiz! What's the margin or risk? Margin or risk? This is a quiz. The credit is 30. The width of each side is 40. What's the quiz? $1,000. Dan, how did you get 1,000? The width is 40, four grand, minus the credit of 30 gives you a grand. So every one contract I put on, I put up a grand. My deltas are eight short. My theta is nine. My vega is 92 short. And my margin is about a grand. So this is a balanced butterfly, a little more short. You say, hey, Dan, what if I wanna be less short delta and have you know, we've been going up. Haven't you been reading the newspapers and watching, Dan? We'd be, yeah, 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 I get it. What if I want to be a little less short, give, be a little more neutral on this trade? What can I do? Well, what do you think the answer is? Keep this at 40 wide, but go a little wider on this side. Instead of buying the 2255 puts, buy the 2245 puts. Are you with me? And then it will be 50 wide on the downside. Ha ha! But what do we do? What is the spread? Here's the question, folks. This is for all the marbles. What strategy do you do? Give me the specific strategy that you do. What's the trade that I do? to take this from a balanced 40 wide butterfly to widen the put spread out to 50. So let's say I start with the balanced, what trade, give me the exact trade I have to do to turn the downside into 50. Come on, 
Who can do me? Who can give me that right answer? Who can give who can give me that answer? No, no, I want the specific trade. Give me no no no, I'm not giving you easy. No, you're not getting easy way out, Stuart. No, Joseph, you're not getting easy way out. No. Give me the spread. The specific spread that I do to change this from 40 wide to 50 wide, I think somebody said it. It's going to be called a put vertical. Put vertical. Put vertical. Put vertical. It's not a call vertical. So, Dan, what's the trade? Buy one. 20, 2, 40, 5, put, sell, 1, 20, 2, 50, 5, put. What's that called? A put credit spread. Dan, are you saying on the original 40 wide position, if I do this trade, the put vertical, it's going to turn it into a mango? You bet your britches. I'm adding a put credit spread. So get ready. We're gonna, now we're going to do it. I told you what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to do it. And what I want you to pay attention to is what's going to be the cost. See how much the capital goes up as we add the put credit spread to get a prettier picture. You ready? So here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and change my 2255 put to 2245. Whoops, we did it. We changed. So now, so now, 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 we just changed this, folks. We went from a 2295. Excuse me. Let me do that again. We did a – so now we're in the mango, right? So we buy the 2335s. We stay 40 wide on the upside. On the call side, right, we stay 40 wide. But on the downside, we did that put credit spread. And now our long is the 2245 puts. We're 50 wide. Now let's look. So to get a position that had less risk on the upside, more risk on the downside, what was our margin before? Our margin was 1,000. Now our margin's 1,800. So our margin went from 1,000 to 1,800. For one contract. Dan, why did it go up so much? We added a put credit spread, ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads, teenagers and non teenagers. Yeah. All right, so we have more risk on the downside to get that prettier picture with less risk on the upside, which we like over the last couple of years. All right, this has become popular. And now our deltas were eight before short, now they're 4.73. So we reduced our short deltas a little bit by widening out the downside versus the upside, right? Our theta is about the same. This is for one contract. Our vega changed a little bit. But the biggest things that change are we change the deltas, reduce them in half, but our margin went up almost 100%. Everybody see that? Now, let me ask you a question. We started at 40 wide, one call side, 40 wide put spread. Then we went to 40 wide call side, 50 wide put side. Hey, folks, what would I do if I want to take my deltas from four? What if I, you know, the market, hey, it's been going up. What if it keeps going up? If I wanted to get my deltas to zero, what would I do? What would I do? I'd go a little wider on the downside. If I took it to 60 wide on the downside, that would take my deltas to zero. So we started out at eight deltas short, then we went to four deltas short, 
we went to zero, but we accomplished, it's like the cholesterol drug, you'll take care of the cholesterol, but you'll lose your three toes, right? And it's the same thing here. We took the deltas down to zero, but we had to widen the put side and our capital goes up. Yeah, you could go, or I could have gone instead of 40, 60, I could have gone 35 wide on the upside and 50 wide on the downside or something like that. But anyways, so the whole purpose of this at the money um, position is why you would go a little more unbalanced is to get the deltas uh, you know, a little less short than a, a balanced butterfly. But again, the magic of the mango, why it has been successful in the community and why I'm focusing on this uh, because I think it's a really good strategy is not this, right? This is just a small part of it. The whole key is what makes the mango a great strategy is the risk management, how we manage the trade, the plan we have, the adjustments we have, all the little details, and that's what we're going to be covering in the class. I just wanted to give you today a good overview what the heck we're going to be covering for two weeks. Um, and uh, so, all right, any other questions? And then I think what I'll do is just I'll put on a live trade just to show how I would do one, and then we'll uh, I'll recap everybody on the trade once uh, next week uh, when we meet for the first t day on Wednesday. So any questions before we jump into finishing off with a live trade example? Uh, Steve says, what would happen in terms of the Greeks if you made this trade 40 wide on the downside and 50 wide on the upside to begin with, then you'd have less risk on the downside, right? You'd have less risk on the downside. And you would be uh, much more short deltas, right? You'd have less risk on the, someone says, why does the margin say $5,000 in the price life? And that's just what uh, Thinkorswim has it, but um, they don't always in, uh, different brokerage firms, they don't always, at least in the uh, computations on the page here, they don't always include the credit, but you, you do include the credit when you're doing the margin. Right. All right, let's do a live trade here. Uh, one last question. To profit from time decay, wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it be better? Remember, there's no better. There's always pluses and minuses. But to profit from time decay, wouldn't it be better to do double diagonal to further eliminate the theta on the long legs? No, but you, again, it's not better. Remember, if you do a double diagonal, that can eat up a lot of capital. Your margin could go up. And the other things, um, the, uh, I mean, you still have decay there. So there's pluses in mind. Double diagonals can eat up a lot of capital with those mixed months trades. So no, it wouldn't be better to do a double diagonal. No, your, your, the decay on butterflies is really, really superb. If the price is between the strikes, which way would you lean? I would lean to the first strike up. Again, we mentioned before a little bit about profit target, 10% uh, of the margin or capital. I like SPX better than RUT. Uh, somebody said which SPX or RUT would be more, how do you decide whether SPX or RUT would be a more advantageous trade? There's not one that's more advantageous. There's pluses and minuses to both. You're gonna get more premium in Russell because the volatility is higher. You're gonna get less premium in SPX, but it doesn't move as much on you. I think it's easier to manage. So, so I like SPX better, but we have a lot of students who trade RUD. All right, so let's just finish with one more thing. I'll let you go. Uh, but again, just a reminder, we start up next Wednesday. We'll have four classes, Wednesday, Friday, Wednesday, Friday. All the classes are recorded and archived, and you can ask questions uh, anytime you want, even months after the class. And uh, so here's a trade today. We're right at 22.94. So if I go in and do a mango, uh, and I'll go in and do, because this will be on it, and then I'll, I'll go over this in detail next Wednesday. So I'm going to right-click. I'm going to look at March 17 expiration, 36 days out. 
I'm going to go March 17 expiration, 36 days out. And so the way you enter it, at least in Think or Swim, I would be sell. You've got to enter it as like a iron condor. Um, and all right, I'll just do one just to show you. All right, so first thing I do is I want to sell the after money call and put. So we're 22.94, so I want to sell the 22.95 calls and I want to sell 22.95 puts, right? All right, so let me do this trade. Let me do this trade and then I'll come back and answer any questions. And then we'll call it a day. So I'm selling the at the money call and the put, that's called a short straddle. Uh, on the upside, I will go, and again, I'm using the March 17 expiration, that's 36 days out. I will go um, 40 wide on the upside. That will take me at 23.35. So I'm 40 wide on the call side, selling the 22.95 calls in the March 17 expiration, buying the 23.35s. On the put side, I'm going to go 50 wide. So I'm going to sell the 22.95s, and then I'm going to buy the 22.45s. So I'm 50 wide on the put side, selling the 22.95s, buying the 22.45 puts. 40 wide on the upside, selling the 2295s, buying the 2335s. And again, it's trading for 3175 credit. Uh, it's 36 days out. So there's much we can talk about execution, but I'll watch it a second just to see sometimes the, not sometimes, uh, the range will change over a couple minutes. So this is what it's giving us a mid right now, but those things change, don't they? $31.75 credit. So what I'm going to do is, because I haven't been watching this for like five minutes, I'm going to start a little higher just to make sure I'm not in the lower end of the range. So it's 31.75 mid. So I'm going to try to sell it for a $32 credit. Everybody with me? What I'm trying to do execution? Has the sound been in and out, or have you guys been okay with the sound? Been okay? All right. So. If the mid is 31.75. I'm going to sell it for $32 credit. Hit the nuclear weapon button, and I'm not executed at 32. But at least, hey, if, if they were trading there, I would have got it. So now let me come down. I'll come down 10 cents at a time. The mid's 31.75. I'm trying to sell it for 32 credit. Let me go down 10 cents. 3190. I'll go down to 3185 even, because it just had the mid at 3175. And so you can see here, folks, the mid's been pretty consistent between 3175 and 3175. So I'm I started high at 32, I've gone down to 3185, just wanted to make sure that they weren't going to fill me at a better price, which I always want, right? Again, I'll get the questions in a second. So now I'm going to work my way down a little bit. I'm still not at the mid price yet. So go down another 10 cents to 31.75. So I'm right there at the mid. Right, I'm right there at the mid. You know, usually I'm willing to cave in maybe 10 cents off once I establish what a decent mid price is or the mid range. Um, so just to get this going for the class, I'll go, well, I'll just go down. So I'll go down a nickel to 31.70. So I went a nickel. Um, Again, 10 cents in SPX would be similar to like a penny in SPY. So I went 10 cents under, or 5 cents under the mid. Let me go 5 cents more under. 
and see if I get executed. Again, I may leave it there for now for a second. Why? We're in a low vol environment. I'm selling volatility in a very low volatility environment, so I'm not, you know, from a market maker's point of view, they're buying volatility at a low volatility, at a low number. So I don't want to go too far. It looked like 3175 was the mid. I'll stay there for a little bit. I don't want to come down. Uh, I, I think that's uh, appropriate. Now, this is a 36-day trade, so I'm much more patient, uh, even if it took me a day or two to get on a 36-day trade than I am with a seven-day trade, because fate is so big with a seven-day trade, I want that sucker on, right? Now, I don't mind going down five more cents. That's not a big deal, just to see if it's filled, just so I can have something on to show you, um, but that's the farthest I'll go. I will not go under 3160. Um, again, you can see the mid changed. Now it's 3170. So if I go to 3160, I bet you I get filled here. Um, I'm about 10 cents under the current mid, and I'll just stay there. If um, I'll just stay there. Um, there's no hurry. This is a 36-day trade. State is not that big of a deal. The mid has kind of moved. The mid range, this is kind of the mid, has been between 3170 and 3185. So that's as low as I think I will go based on what the mid range has been and the level of, of volatility in the market. VIX is very low. And uh, anyways, we'll see if I get filled in the, while I'm answering questions here. All right, so let's let's answer a few questions. I'll answer some questions and then we'll call it a day. Again, all you'd have to do if you want to join the class next Wednesday, just go to Sheridan uh, Mentoring, the front page, and you should be able to sign up. It's $197 for the class. All right, so let's get some questions here. Dan, what do you do when the trade goes against you? Uh, and that's what we'll be going over. We'll, we'll manage it, right? We have a profit and loss target. And then what we'll be doing in the class is showing you the different adjustments we would do as it moves against you. So, um, but we still have a, you know, what, what, what drives the position is we have a max loss, right? So, uh, you know, we will have adjustment points where we will adjust it and what we will do. But if, if it hits our limit, we're going to get out. But we'll give you a very thorough plan, it's specifically what to do on these trades. Um, uh, let's see. What other questions? Uh, why are you choosing 40-point wings out instead of, say, 20? Generally, on, in Russell and SPX, um, if I'm doing 30 to 50-day trades, it's going to be 40 to 50 wide. Usually, I'm trying to get my long, some of my long out-of-money options at around a 20 to 30 delta, which is which would make the spreads narrower if it was a seven-day trade and wider if it was a 40-day trade. You are trying to get more than the mid. Why? Because, again, there's no mid price. It's a mid range. So I just came in, Steve, and saw the mid. But I didn't know what the range has been for the last 10 minutes because I wasn't watching it. So uh, you can't just go in and assume the mid is the mid. You know, you got to Look at it for 10 minutes, get an idea of what the range of the mid has been. Another question says that, Dan, if you have a bearish opinion, um, could you make the call side wider than the put side? You could. You could make the call side wider than the put side. Um, if I had a bearish opinion, I'd probably start the, the butterfly more balanced and not unbalanced. Uh, Sean says more credit is better. Absolutely. How long would I wait to get filled? Again, if it's a 30, 30 to 50 day trade, even if it took me a couple days, that's fine, right? Because state is not as big. But on a seven day trade, I'm going to be a little more adamant about getting it on because one day of state is a lot. Oh, I usually exit my trade when I hit my profit target or my max loss. Um, 
and uh, bid ask spreads are wider on monthly expirations versus weeklies. Does that matter? You know, that's a good question, Joe. I don't, even though it is, I'm confident that, you know, when you're in a liquid vehicle like SPX that trades a lot, I don't mind being in weeklies, even if it has less open interest than the monthlies. Because again, as long as, if I'm trading weeklies in a liquid vehicle like SPX, I really, it doesn't matter, in my opinion. Uh, how long do you wait before you tweak the prices to get it filled? Um, again, like I did right here, I started, I was lowering my credit every 20 seconds because it doesn't take that long. If I put it in the price that the fish want to bite it at, they'll do it with me right away. Um, Kevin says, if your break even is breached, would it make sense to close the trade and recenter the trade? Again, we don't, which we'll show you next week, all our, our risk management isn't based around the break even. We have different points at which we'll adjust it. But we'll, once we adjust it, um, as far as recentering the trade, we'll show you we have a couple different ideas on how we would manage it. I mean, you certainly could recenter the trade at the money, but we'll, we'll, we'll kind of share with you different, you know, why we do what we do as far as the risk management. Uh, it, we're doing calls and puts, call side and the put side on this trade. All right, you know, I think we'll, if, if I missed any of the questions, um, maybe just send me an email, dan at sheridanmentoring.com. Again, we launch the class next Wednesday, the 15th of February at 1 Central. All the classes will be recorded and archived if you're working, and then you could just ask, go to the class page, ask any questions, and I can help you with that and we'll go from there. All right, well, folks, thanks for showing up. Appreciate it, and have a wonderful day. We'll see you next Wednesday at 1 Central. Thanks.